And we're live. I'm Larry King, and this is CNN. <laughs> <laughs> when you counted down, I thought of iCarly, the theme song. Oh, yeah. Three, two. <laughs> Yeah, you see, 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 you are the moderate rascals. <laughs> we have very tame milk toast opinions on on plenty of uh, of minor political issues, you know. <laughs> Such as uh, taxation, um, sales tax being yes. increased from 7.5 to 7.7% mm-hmm. uh, in our local county. Yes. <laughs> uh, but no. Nah. I just think it's too far, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not incredibly too far, just that. Just moderately. <laughs> Fuck. All right. Sorry. Today we're tired of shit, dude. Yeah. I, uh... I actually was doing grout... Uh, <laughs> steals my story yeah man had a long weekend and uh, had to go pick up transcripts had to go drop off a doll yeah had to go lay grout it ain't easy being being me it ain't easy <laughs> being me will i see the penitentiary or will i stay free all right, uh, let's just get to it because we're already one minute, two minutes in. So. All right, yeah, but we got to get it out of our system at first. Yeah. All right, it's out All of right, our system. Out. <laughs> All yeah. right, so uh, welcome to Radical Rascals. I'm Radical. Nick. I'm Sean. And we are the Radical Rascals. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. Uh, today we're going to talk about imperialism. And colonialism. And colonialism. Well, I, actually, I think... I, I think that that's going to be an improper way of saying it. Well, no, it's both. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're both very important things, even though, you know, there are differences in the... Some people don't use them as if they're they're the same thing. They use them as their synonyms, but... I think it's because they often go hand They often do, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. I, I don't think you can really have imperialism without colonialism. Exactly. And actually, you could have colonialism without imperialism, like, on really small scales. You know, back at, like... But this would be hundreds of years ago, like in the age of city states, you know, because mm-hmm. I, I think you can accomplish the concept of, of oh, I thought you were telling me like, stop. No, no. Uh, you can accomplish the concept of colonialism without, you know, any sort of large scale um, imperialist uh, agenda, you know, like it could just be in the concept. Well, unless as, you're benefiting the country. I know, but I'm saying, like, I'm talking about, like, way back, like, in in the, um, in the age of, like, city-states, you know, like, Uh like, wherever it's, it's, there haven't even really been full countries formed, or at least not everything was within the bounds of full countries, you know, it's like, if you have some areas that are still, you know, like, kind of big fish, small pond mentality, Mm -hmm. then it would still be colonialism, even though it's not, like, very large scale you know you're mm-hmm. talking about what 10 20 thousand people yeah but either way so yeah no we uh we're gonna be talking about imperialism and uh, colonialism today and i have a lot to say about imperialism uh sean said he didn't have much to say so <laughs> we'll uh mostly be focused on me today but, but yeah <clears throat> so uh let's let's start off by uh okay so we're gonna talk we're going to probably lay out imperialism, what it is, um, how it manifests itself, and then sort of the the tools of imperialism, um, how it's used today, how it maybe was used, you know, back then and historically. But but yeah, so let's start off by defining imperialism. Do you want to do that, or should I do that? Uh, or should Ariana do that? Ariana, can you do it? Oh, All she's right. not breathing. Oh, my God. All right, we'll get to her after we're done. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll handle that later. All right. Um, We could both do it, you know, just... That was... Uh, Ariana, really? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you savage. Will you relax? We're trying to record oh something. Oh, my here. God. Um, <clears throat> it, was, it was that... That tomato dip. Yeah. 
that that iftar. Ivar. <laughs> iftar Ivar. is breaking fast on Ramadan. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, I was close. It's when the sun sets and it's time to eat. Iftar, that's what I was... Anyway. Damn, we are all over the place today. <laughs> it's going to be one of those episodes. Uh, Just like episode 37. You remember that one? <laughs> yeah, classic. That one on uh, how J.K. Rowling stole the idea of Harry Potter from uh, black writers. <laughs> is that a real? Is that a real thing? Yeah. Like, alright, h- how real is that? It's pretty real. Okay, because I've literally never heard yeah. about it. Not even, like, little, like, whispers about that. Yeah, it's real. Like, h- how much have you looked into it? Like, you, you I, saw a Twitter re- post about no, it? No, I read like, an article, an in-depth article on it once, I think, from The Guardian I don't know how you had to something. throw in, like, in-depth, because you realized... No, it was, it was um, like, I was genuinely interested, because I showed it to my students in Kosovo, mm-hmm. the, uh, the so advanced students. Them? Yes. <laughs> I thought you were going to talk about her being transphobic. Oh, that too, but... Yeah, she's a total piece of shit. But anyway, imperialism. Harry um, Potter's pretty good. <laughs> not really. You haven't even watched them or read them, alright? So I don't want to hear you talk about it. But yes, but, yes, we can get into... Actually, this would probably be a better segue, because J.K. Rowling is British, and the British have a huge right. history of uh, imperialism. Um, we actually are a product of colonialism and have now become the imperialists that yeah. we have sought out to um, separate from. Yes. So, yeah. Uh, to put it briefly, um, uh, imperialism is when a country uh, has exhausted all of its territories, uh, all of its yeah, essentially all of its resources in its uh, territory. So, for example, the United States. Here you have a country, and they have, you know, used all of the resources, right? Like, the oil is pretty much used up. Um, uh, other resources, you know, metals and whatnot, everything. Not not fully used up, right? This They're is still... not brief. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, for people to understand it, because it's such a such a complex uh, idea, concept. So, you know, it's the United States has used up all of its resources. What does it do? Where does it get its resources to fund uh, and to support materially the life of its citizens? You know what I'm saying? Like, um, and that's where imperialism comes abroad comes into play is when you. You, know, you have no more resources left to exploit, so you go exploit another country's resources. That is the definition of imperialism. And and, and Lenin uh, has a book, a very important uh, theoretical work called uh, 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 Imperialism, the Final Stage of Capitalism. And that that's essentially what it is, is you have capitalism in one country, and you have exhausted all of your resources. So what do you do? You go abroad. You exploit other people's resources, other people's land. You take over. You know why? To support the homeland. You know the sort of the um, the metropole, um, where, where the center, where everything is located. So that's what the United States does. Uh, it engages in imperialism all over the world, in in the Middle East to get oil to supply, you know, ourselves, right? Um, and we go in Africa and we engage in imperialism there to, you know, uh, to get resources for us. And in South America and in Asia, it's all it's all over the world and, and Europe as well. So they that's what imperialism is. Um, it sounds complex, but it's rather simple. Again, just to reiterate, it's when a country has exhausted and exploited all of its resources to the point where they are uh, essentially forced uh, to go abroad and exploit uh, other uh, lands and other resources from other countries. That is imperialism. So you're wrong. Yes. <laughs> that was a joke, JK, LOL. <laughs> no, that's, uh, that's good. Uh, I guess my only, I don't want to call it an issue, but the only part that sounds like it could be confusing for some people would be the the use of, like, the concept of exhausting resources without 
having exhausted resources, um, would it, uh, can you still have imperialism, you know? Yeah. Because, because technically we do still have oil reserves. Technically we do still grow food here. We do still have factories. We do have stuff that's manufactured here. So we haven't completely exhausted our resources. Yeah. It's not necessary to, it's not like, okay, well, before we go and invade other countries, we got to make sure that we get, (laughs) we use up all of our resources. No, because some of them are renewable. Right. You know, so. Okay. Yeah, because I think within the current framework that we have, it's a lot more about uh, labor and workforce. I think uh, with with the capitalism that we have in place and uh, just with how the world kind of works, it's less about the resources themselves than it is about you know exporting um, the exploitative work practices, I guess. Um, and that's why we have a lot of things that get made in other countries, you know, like things that get made over in China. Just I'd say things that get made over uh, overseas in general, because I, I don't know. A but that but that's outsourcing. You're right. But that, wouldn't that be a form of imperialism? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it can be considered a form of imperialism. It's it's I guess I'm just trying to get to like the bare bones of what imperialism would be, because if you can take out the concept of uh of exhausting your resources then what is it really you know yeah no again uh it's not necessary to exhaust all of your resources it's just using other people's resources as well mm-hmm. you know that's yeah, and that, that's why i was saying like it, it seems like it would be a lot more focused on uh on, on the workforce then because you're using the labor of other countries and you're you're paying them pennies on the dollar when they're generating like and millions or billions of dollars of of revenue for countries you know for for another country because yeah. they aren't even seeing any of it they're seeing a very small fraction of it whereas yeah. if they were working within their the framework of their own economy they would be able to bolster that economy and help the yeah. con- their country as a whole uh benefit so it seems right. like it's kind of sapping that as a resource yeah no that's definitely a part of it but sometimes we go in there with our own oil companies and drill that shit ourselves and just mm-hmm. take it you know okay um, would it be uh something like um i think it would be something like uh what was it the, sh- the the sugar factories um over in puerto rico and in the in the latin american or in the, the caribbean islands yeah sugar cane and yeah, yeah, and yeah fruit companies and yeah shit. That, that was huge in the yeah. in the early 20th century yeah uh whenever we first acquired puerto rico we realized like oh shit you know like this land is this land's looking pretty good over here it looks like they can grow a lot of shit so then we just started establishing factories where we can grow and uh and process sugar and sugar cane and then use the byproduct of molasses i believe to mm-hmm. to make rum and then it's like we had all of that so so you're saying that would be a better example of imperialism where it's not specifically that we're stealing their work but we're stealing literally the entire product we're stealing the right. nutrients out of the fucking ground right right okay. to benefit us okay that's their stuff and it's not benefiting them it's benefiting us All right that's what i mean this microphone this this computer my phone your phone mm. everything has all of these uh electronics have like cobalt in them you know right. and cobalt comes from the africa. democratic republic of, of the congo in okay. africa and it's little kids over there mining that shit and they're dying right. and you know that's that's a prime example of what imperialism is it's taking the resources for us rather than the cobalt benefiting the congo yeah. you know um it's benefiting us and that's exactly what's wrong with imperialism uh so so that's why uh you know anti-imperialists uh like for example hugo chavez and yeah. uh, and fidel castro and uh campos and all these figures uh sankara sankara wants uh don't want the u.s in their country. yeah they don't want the u.s in their country yeah. These these Puerto Rican resources are for the Puerto Ricans. Mm. These Cuban our natural resources in Cuba, yeah. they're for us. They're for Cubans. Same with Venezuela. Hugo Chavez was vilified and turned into a fucking devil because he made the absurd statement of saying that you know Venezuelan oil should benefit 
uh, the Venezuelan people. Yeah. And the U.S. made him seem like some sort of psychopath. Why? Because he wanted to benefit his own people. And that imperialism, like we'll get into later, that propaganda that, that Nick mentioned is so strong that it gets even some Venezuelans against um, this idea. You know, there are some Venezuelans out there that want um, U.S. involvement. They I mean, it's it. just like in Puerto Rico. Do you know how many Puerto yeah. Ricans I've spoken to who are like who want to be a fifty-first state? Right, right. You know, or not even, or just want to remain a colony. Yeah, but no, no, no. A, a lot of the ones I speak to, are like, no, we want to be a state. We are you kidding? Do you know how how much we'll we'll gain from that? We'll, you know, uh, how, how many programs we'll be able to get and everything. And I was, I'm just sitting there, and the the issue is that I've never been to Puerto Rico, and I get told a lot that I'm not Puerto Rican enough, so. It's like I'm not able to point out the issue with wanting to be a state. It's like by being a state, you're no longer a country. You're no longer your own person. You know, you're, you're no longer your own entity, which we can discuss, you know, the abolition of borders another time, you know. But in this in the current state of affairs, no pun intended, you know, it's. I think it's significantly more important for countries to be able to establish their identity and their self-sufficiency mm. before we can even address something like destruction of borders. Because right. if we destroy borders around the world like today in our current economy, it would just lead to the, the virus that's here to just spread, mm -hmm. you know? Like, yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh, it'd be madness. Hawaii but. is another example. Hawaii was has indigenous people there. You know, mm. There are Hawaiians that are... You know, they didn't want to be part of the U.S. And yeah. there's a huge anti-colonial, anti-imperialist movement that has existed in Hawaii forever. They even had their own monarch and they supported the monarch um, because they didn't like the U.S. invasion and sort of just colonization and, and seizure of Hawaii. Um, yeah. They didn't They didn't want to be part of the U.S. Some of them, most of them probably. I don't know the exact percentages, but... I think, Puerto Rico is the same. I think speaking about <clears throat> Hawaii and Puerto Rico, it's a good segue into uh, into colonialism mm -hmm. and how that is um, one of the tools of imperialism. Mm -hmm. uh, we can go back over the different types of imperialism or colonialism later, but at the very least, we can we can talk about that um, colonialism being the uh, I guess it's more of the the active side of imperialism. It's it's going into a country. Um, I guess imperialism is more of the concept of spreading uh, as a country uh, politically and culturally through other countries, um, like he said, to, to extract their, uh, their wealth or resources and also to spread. I think colonialism is more of the, the active uh, extraction and exploitation of the country and imperialism is more of just the spread of, uh, of the disease, you know, we can mm. call it that. Um, yeah, so colonialism is similar to what we, or not similar, it is what we did to, uh, to Puerto Rico, you know. Uh, we acquired it, we, we told them, oh hey, you know, you're your own country, but we'll, we'll show you how to run things a little bit. And all we did was we just like, we just dug our, our nails deep inside of them, you know, and we just clung. And, you know, now they're just so far, like, they're, they're so deep into it that, the idea of America being separate or Puerto Rico being separate from America, you know, and being its, its own uh, complete, uh, completely separate entity is is ludicrous. I, I don't think it could ever happen because a man like uh, Pedro Albizu Campos is, is not going to come around anytime soon. I mean, you know, the, the fact that we had so many men like him in the early to mid 1900s was was baffling. I mean. That should be telling of, of the, the times, you know, the fact that so many people like him rose up, you know, between him, Sankara, Ho Chi Minh, Lenin, Guevara, Marco, well, Marcos is 2000s, but still like, you know, like all the, all these really important people all throughout the world who were on the same, on the same wave of consciousness. I, getting outside of it a little bit anyway colonialism though is yeah going into the country establishing the the, the policies and actively um i guess uh through i guess forms of genocide even most of the time um 
starts to, to spread and to exploit the resources, labor, and wealth for the mainland. Um, that's, that's what a colony really is, is just, it's like a mining camp almost, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's... There's, uh, obviously you have different types of colonization. You have, like, overseas colonization, which is very typical. For example, you have an island like Britain, um, in, in Europe colonizing half the world. <clears throat> you know countries like India and uh, Egypt yeah I mean literally you the can US. you can probably say half the world yeah. um, and that's overseas but then you have you know uh, sort of this land colonization where you kind of like uh, the Mongols where they just swept through land and uh, you know took over plundered the territory and whatnot. Uh about something like like the Roman Empire? Yeah, like the Roman Empire. That's an, another form of colonization. Um, but, so yeah, those are the two main forms, I guess, or probably the only forms. Uh, no, no, because you, you've uh, settler colonialism. You didn't say that. Yeah, but uh, in terms of how, how it's operated, because overseas colonialism mm -hmm. can be divided, right? It can just be the state having direct control or they can populate the lands and that's what settler colonialism is um, it's when you know a state uh, or, a, or a kingdom or a country uh, literally moves people into the colony um, starts pushing those people out. I mean you could think of like America right essentially we, we came here and just started spreading west and killing and pushing people out of their own land I mean that's mm -hmm. settler colonialism yeah, Israel, uh, what, they, what they're doing to the Palestinians is also settler colonialism. Yeah, Serbia, what they did to Kosovo is also settler colonialism. Uh, <laughs> um, South Africa, uh, right, a classic case of settler colonialism. So that's, that's pretty much everywhere. Uh, um, and that's one of the more, more violent forms of colonialism because you actually have uh, what Nick mentioned, like you experience the genocide of a people uh, to the point where these people are moved out. You know, it's one thing when uh, this foreign power is colonizing you from abroad, uh, kind of like in, in Haiti, like where you have France, hmm. even though there were some obviously French colonists there. Um, but you know, France is Spain and, and the Philippines. Yeah, like they're trying to rule this this nation from abroad, and you know, uh, what happened in Haiti obviously was a revolution, and yeah. they kicked out all the the French, uh, rightfully so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, settler colonialism is one of the more violent forms of colonialism, precisely because it leads to the, the genocide and the displacement of. Uh, the colonized um so yeah uh we can there's also a, a book by uh 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 the gun the ghanaian president uh kwame uh, no kwame nkrumah uh oh yeah, yeah, yeah. my bad and he wrote a book called uh Neocolonialism, the last stage of imperialism. So he's playing on Lenin's words, and what he's describing is the colonialism that exists today, and the colonialism that exists today um, is uh, is an interesting form of colonization because oh, it's more implicit than explicit, right? It, it's it's not okay because I was wondering about the 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 prefix neo yeah but that that's that's what he's referring to is yeah. that it's like it's a, a kind of a softer exactly. far further reaching form because of things like uh like the internet and right the transfer of like media and culture right so then like through that you know Western civilization can spread without us having to you know uh, enact any specific explicit policies exactly. Like the U.S. is not necessarily engaged in, um, you know, a sort of physical colonization of, let's say, 
um, you know, some some African country or something, but mm. they're there via, you know, other forms, right? Mm. Whether they be economic, cultural, you know. Mm. Uh, so yeah, that that's another another form of uh, neo colonialism is what, what what we have today, um, which can still be you know a country ruling another country uh, abroad, you know, like what the United States is, say, doing to, to Puerto Rico. That's mm-hmm. still colonization, but we just call it neo-colonialism because it's today, it's in the modern world. And because it's a, a lot less explicit than it used to be. Yeah. You know, I, I think it's it's a lot more common for, for people to not notice right. how deep it really is. All right. Yeah, it's almost like it burrows so deep that it doesn't leave a bump on the surface anymore. Right. Yeah. Uh, and but just I, sorry, no. just just to be clear, um, I'm going to be using the words colonialism and imperialism now, almost interchangeably. But just so you remember, um, all colonialism is imperialism, but not all imperialism is necessarily colonialism. Yeah. And what I mean by that is that. Uh, through economic uh, uh, systems like the uh, International Monetary Fund, the IMF, and the World Bank. Uh, that is an example of uh, economic imperialism. Uh, that's what we did in Jamaica. Uh, that's what we did in Mali. That's what we do all over the world. Um, so it's about uh, imperialism, but through... Uh, like Nick says, more sort of implicit terms and, you know, uh, things that are really invisible. When you when you give, for example, the IMF and the World Bank, how they operate is they would give a loan to a certain country um, uh, so they can develop, but they would be charged interest. And they would be forced to abide by the terms of service of exactly. the loan, which is what happened with Vietnam. Whatever exactly. Vietnam post-revolution was like all right cool we're gonna try to enact our socialist state and they were like and no they're yeah. like listen you want money you gotta allow a certain level of capitalism within your developing country exactly so it's 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 a form of uh you're putting a country in debt and you're yeah. you're controlling them by giving them the money to develop um so it's very tricky, and some, but sometimes you have to make those sacrifices. You know, uh, some some countries just have no other choice. Um, some countries are lucky to pay off the IMF and the the World Bank their loans, but some are not. Uh, so yeah, w- when when I say now another form of colonialism is uh, right. So you have this sort of a form of a cultural imperialism. It's when you know. Like what Nick mentioned earlier, it's like uh, colonialism and imperialism in the form of culture. You know, a country, a certain, like uh, Puerto Rico. So many people in Puerto Rico know English. Why? Because of U.S. cultural imperialism. You know what I'm saying? Um, Because back in the early 1900s, whenever the U.S. came in, they started enforcing in all schools um, English as the primary language. They had all the textbooks uh, shipped over in English, and they were having everyone learn English, even though nobody fucking knew English, and right. they made that the the main language that they needed to, uh, to use. Exactly. And the same thing with uh, with the French Empire. That's why so many Africans speak French. Not to mention it, Haiti. I mean, and Haiti, with, right? Uh, Creole. Creole, yeah. So they, they, it's a sort of cultural imperialism where... And even to an extent, the Soviet Union, um, Soviet Union had Im- cultural imperialism in in Central Asia. These are Central Asian people. These are Turkic people. They're Muslims. They have their own language. Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan. Right? Um, they have their own local languages. But when they became part of uh, the Soviet Union. Um, uh, the Russia, right, sort of the core nation of, of the Soviet Union, um, did engage in a form of cultural imperialism by um, forcing these Central Asian people to learn Russian. That's why so many uh, of the post-Soviet countries uh, know Russian. 
So you're saying the USSR was bad? No, I'm saying they engaged in a form of imperialism, cultural imperialism, and a certain certain ideological imperialism too. Um, so they weren't perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So some parts of it was bad. Yeah. No. Okay. no, no, no. Well, um, listen, I'm throwing I'm throwing you through a tanky filter right now. That's no, right. of course. Because I mean, you're like, yeah, they were kind of good. Yeah, no, they were. I support the Soviet Union. They were not perfect. Definitely not perfect. They made plenty of mistakes. But, uh, but yeah, they did engage in a form of... I just wanted to get you, like, on, on record. Yeah. Just because there's going to be a point in the future where someone's going to accuse you of being a tanky, and you're going to be like, nah, dude, look, I've been saying this shit from way back. Look at this. <laughs> episode 8? Yeah. No, episode eight. Sure. Somewhere like that. But, anyway, sorry. So... So yeah, um. and and another form of cultural imperialism is uh, um, anime. Yes, anime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, missionaries and how they engage in sort of a cultural imperialism. Wouldn't it be more of like an ideological imperialism? I, I guess I mean this is more. It like, is. It is. is really splitting hairs because it's still a part of culture, but right. I feel like. Um, like religion uh, and culture do go hand in hand but aren't necessarily yeah. it's both it is both uh okay yeah because they so learn english customs do tie into culture they do okay yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, get you, I get you i get you you know so but just that the concept of it it's a lot of people don't realize that it's like um we need to go civilize these people yeah. these barbarians Oh, yeah. the, they the, the still white believe savior complex. yeah it's a, an extreme white savior complex it's like these people they're 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 just total barbarians they're so backward we need to go in and, and teach them um the right god the right religion we need to teach them how to behave we have to save them we, yeah exactly we have to save Literally, them yeah. and and that's a form of uh you know imperialism a form of cultural imperialism and it's a modern day it's also a form of uh uh what people who today call neo-colonialism, you know, mm. and it's it's very common. Um, so that's another sort of uh, occurrence, common occurrence of uh, of imperialism, neo-colonialism. We gotta save these people. Yeah, they're dumb. Well, before um, it, it would have been a smoother transition to this, but you you had. Uh... You have mentioned genocide a few times um, as a huge part of colonialism. So I wanted to get more into that as being um, this, the second tool uh, discussed in imperialism, which, like you said, is uh, kind of the extension of colonialism, especially uh, settler colonialism. Um, so genocide, um, as, uh, as it is recognized... Uh, around the world is oh my gosh what 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 is it the uh the destruction or the intent of the destruction in part or whole of a people um religion or ethnicity basically um it's the idea cuz originally <coughs> oh that was good <laughs> I tasted that, 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 uh, Ivar, oh, Ivan, yeah. Ivar, Ivar, yeah. Ivar, Ivar, yeah. Ivar, yeah. Ivar, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, cause originally, uh, whenever I hear genocide, I just think mass murder, um, of, of an ethnicity, right? But then I realized that it is kind of more nuanced than that it's not necessarily the mass murder a lot of the time i it, it is it, uh, shown in murder um or expressed through murder but it's like dis- uh, attempting to destroy the people you know um so murder aside it's also trying to destroy their culture their belief system uh how, how they how they practice their beliefs um it, it really attacks all the aspects of of who a people are i mean if you think of like slavery um when they didn't just take black people and bring them here they took black people uh taught them english 
uh, prevented them from using their language, you know, actively destroyed who they were, you know, separated them from their identity. And that's a huge part of genocide is it's not just, oh, you know, um, we're going to kill you. It's no, 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 no. Like we, we want to make it so that, you know, your, your culture, your, your beliefs, like you as, as a people are, are not here anymore. You as a concept are not here anymore, which when you start thinking of it like that is significantly more terrifying. I mean, to be attempting to destroy, you know, like everything about a people, their practices and beliefs and thoughts um, and historical impacts as well is just baffling. Um, but that is that is a huge part of imperialism. Uh, I mean, think of... Uh, you can think of America and how they've done it through slavery, America and how they've done and done it through uh, settler colonialism with the Native Americans. Um, you could think of who, where else? Um, I think Spain with the Philippines, maybe. If Ariana were were awake right now, she could tell us. But <laughs> still not breathing. <laughs> um, South Africa would probably be a good example. Um, I forget the name of the country, and I don't want to call it Rhodesia, because the dude... Zimbabwe? That, yes, there we mm. go. Uh, Zimbabwe. Because um, I know that the dude who who tried calling it Rhodesia was like a sick monster. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's there's plenty of examples from around the world of like just trying to, to cleanse areas. Kosovo, you know? I don't know. Yeah, I guess Kosovo too. <laughs> um, Germany, I mean, even uh, pretty much all fascist states, really, because yeah. that's what they do. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's the concept is to to clean, you know, and it's just it's just wild to mm. me. Um, uh, yeah, uh, genocide is almost. A byproduct of uh, of uh, imperialism and, and in particular colonialism, hmm. um, and with you know with with fascist countries that are also imperialist, um, they are guided by uh, you know the sort of ethnic unity and this like superior race like in with hitler mm. you know and how do you how do you make germany ethnically pure this sort of aryan superior race well you have to get rid of the inferior races right mm -hmm. and you engage in, in genocide um even though that's more of a so, sort of uh internal mm. uh imperialism which still exists. I mean, which, yeah. So even which, when uh, when I was reading Stokely speaks, he talks about um, how uh, how the black communities in the U.S. are colonies. Right, they're colonies. You right. know, they're they're internal colonies, but they're still treated exactly the same as exactly. colonies, which I thought was incredibly interesting. Yeah. Uh, and a really neat way of looking at it, you know, because it's it, it's true. It if it, it really does fit. You know right. all all the aspects of it, you know. Because it, it's sort of dual layered. Because black people in America, um, they're colonized, and mm -hmm. two, they don't have land to go back to. Right. So they're stuck. So they're it's like a double layered oppression. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Uh, genocide. Oh, I just want to say uh, about genocide denial uh, a lot of surprisingly leftists anti-imperialists engage in genocide denial um, simply because the US supports the people who have been genocided mm -hmm. so it's like well hold up hold up hold up if the United States who was like the, 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 the king of genocide uh, supports Bosnians and supports Albanians, then the Albanians and Bosnians must be lying. They must be, you um, know. Okay, so it's the concept of, okay, uh, like he lied, therefore every single thing he says is a lie. Yeah. And it's like, 
And we see that today with the U.S. and China, right? Yeah. There's the Uyghur, uh, quote-unquote, genocide, which is debated right now. Why uh, do you say, quote-unquote, do you not believe that it is? No, I do believe it's a, a oh, genocide. Oh, but it's because it's up for debate. Right. Gotcha. Right. Okay. Um, uh, and it's the same exact argument, you know. Mm. Uh, there are, for example, on, on, on Twitter... A guy, just a famous, very popular uh, communist on Twitter, who is actually from China. So he's a Chinese diaspora here in the United States. Mm -hmm. And he was saying that the Uyghur genocide is fake and it's just um, U.S. propaganda to vilify China. Right, because that's the new thing now, right? It used to be anti-Soviet. It used to be, you know, like, drug, war on drugs and shit mm -hmm. like that, you know. And now they I mean, yeah, I, I could I could definitely see that narrative being pushed a lot because that is a huge talking point in conservative circles. Right. China is oh China China's bought land here. China has a lot of people here. Exactly. You know, uh, they, it, it's it's all a big plan. China bought Biden. China China yeah. this China that. You know, a lot of it has been China China centric. Really. Yeah. So I could I could see that being. China's like the enemy now. And it used to yeah. be Muslims until like just recently, right? Like yeah, I mean, Muslims. now there's Chinese Muslims? Yeah, now there's Chinese <laughs> there's Muslims. There's a new strain? <laughs> <laughs> Shit, what do we do about that? <laughs> but like... like it the, makes it so difficult to believe though because I, I just, I see... And I haven't looked enough into it, but I see signs of China expressing disinformation... And I, I guess I would call it pettiness on the same scope as America. So it makes it very difficult to want right. to believe one side or another. Exactly. Which is why, like, I, I'm literally just in a position of, I don't know. I don't know who to believe, you know. Yeah. Uh, China supported the genocide in Kosovo. Yeah. China supported the genocide in Bosnia. So, you know. So they might be supporting the genocide in their country. We solved it. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, th I think uh, I think you're right though to to take that stance is it's like we just don't have enough evidence yet. I mean, even the people who have come forward saying, "Oh, I've made it from this camp." Exactly. You know, it, it, it fucking sucks. You know, like our our reaction should be to believe them, right? Yeah. And you know, that's what that's the position we should take. And I, as somebody whose family has experienced genocide and who who understands genocide, uh, you know. Better, better than, than anyone better than like these leftists who yeah. just talk shit yeah. you know chi china is not committing genocide against the uyghur muslims because uh since when does the u.s care about muslims you know it's almost like a straw man it's a straw man. it's like they're straw manning their not even their own argument but well, i guess kind of it's, it's it's weird it's like yeah i i just i don't i don't fully yeah. get it it's like well okay Apparently, since recently, but I, I don't know what their net gain is. You know, maybe America only cares because they're trying to uh, pander to to people's sentiments. Mm -hmm. You know, and they see that it'll make China look bad. And if America can make China look bad exactly. by supporting or by um, denouncing, or, yeah. oh, what the fuck, supporting the fact that there is a genocide over there. Right. You know, not supporting the genocide. Right. Um, then they can you know get people on board exactly with them. to hate china exactly which so, is propaganda yeah you know you know but that could very well be this the case you know mm -hmm. the, the problem is that intentions aside you know neither side uh neither side's intentions will change any facts exactly you know so it's like even if america you know is supporting for all the wrong reasons mm -hmm. um you know the, the fact that there's a, a genocide occurring it doesn't change whether there is or is not, you know? And it's right. like, if there is, then all we're doing is sitting here, you know, doing nothing. But if there's not, then it's just providing them with an excuse to allow us to go to war with them, which will literally be World War Three. Right. You know, there, there's no way around it. Because, right. it, oh my God, dude, that would be a fucking nightmare. A war with China. We wouldn't get our Razor scooters anymore. <laughs> all right. Yeah, so there's that. Uh, what else is on the topic of imperialism? 
Oh, damn, we're just dropping that one real quick. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it is what it is. There's just nothing we can really, <laughs> yeah, really talk fun. about there. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think you're right, though. It's just, you know, we still got this Chinese flu. I still laugh when I hear people <laughs> call it that. You know people still call it that? Yeah, yeah. we got the, the, the Chinese flu. Chinese flu. <laughs> Dude, what is this, 1920? <laughs> the, the Spanish flu. Fucking, um... So you you had mentioned that it's propaganda, and that's our uh, our final point is uh, propaganda. Propaganda is uh, another tool of imperialism, uh, which ties into colonialism um, and genocide. Because propaganda will constantly get spread to further genocide, as well as kind of uh, paint the picture of genocide in a different way. We'll paint it as being a national necessity. Like, oh, we need to do this because we are the good guys. Mm -hmm. And anyone who's against the good guys must therefore be bad guys. Right. These people are against us, which means they are bad guys. So we as a nation have a moral obligation to do this. And you as our people have a moral obligation to support us and to do it, you know, for us by proxy. Mm -hmm. You know, so propaganda is used heavily, heavily, heavily by... Uh, imperialist nations to spread the concept of like moral obligation you know i think that's such a big part of it you know even going back to what you mentioned about uh it, through colonialism about um uh, missionaries uh, yeah. that's a huge concept of propaganda as well where it's like oh hey you know the the, the great white savior is here you know uh we, we have come to to save you from your your wicked savage ways Mm. We have come to uh, to enlighten you and you know to to help get you into into heaven. You know, um, all you have to do is just you know just forget everything you believe in, learn our language, and become right. one of us. Exactly. That's, all you, that's all you got to do. Exactly. Though. You know what, what's what's that saying? Where it's like we go into a country. It's like white people. Are like, <laughs> God bless you. Go into a country. <laughs> God bless you. The white people will bring a Bible. And the indigenous people will have the land. And when they leave, the indigenous people will have the Bible and the white people will have the land. Exactly. And I think that is so appropriate. I mean, incredibly inappropriate, but so appropriate to to describe how it works. Um, even putting religion aside, like propaganda just gets used all the time. It was used heavily during World War II. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, both by us and by, by Nazis, you know, like pushing the narrative that like we have to do it and you know by all means i'm not usually in support of america but us stopping nazis okay yeah i'll, I'll definitely get on board with that one but but that was late in yeah the war. Like, oh yeah it, it was like we six, waited no, to see like, who would win and yeah. then threw our might behind the soviet union yeah it wasn't like we're an- inherently anti-nazis we would have no no no, no, no. yeah yeah, yeah. We, it was what seven years into the war is it 38 uh, 39? Less than seven years. Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, it was only a couple of years, actually. We, we uh, Regardless, I mean, yeah. a lot of damage was done in those right. couple of years. But yeah, I mean, it just... It's 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 baffling. I mean, propaganda... Uh, forgot to, to mention. You know, propaganda gets defined basically as information, um, politically biased information that gets spread. Um, that could be in the form of entertainment, of public figures, of um, media. I mean, it, it can really come in the form of, of anything, even just the way things get painted. It could just be a different palette of paint um, where you can take something like an honest story, but just paint it by changing some of the words around to make it sound different, even while sticking to the general facts. And literal painting, like painting pictures and yes you know that's a propaganda too yes that 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 can you can paint pictures as propaganda i I will not not gonna say that you cannot (laughs) but yeah oh also through education uh education is another huge part of propaganda i mean just looking at our education system and how we were taught to look at the world and events in the world through a very specific lens. And whenever it's challenged, they say, oh, but look, you know, what have we said that's wrong? It's like, well, it's not that what you're saying is wrong. It's that the lens that you're forcing us to look through 
is what's wrong. Right. You know, it's like, that's kind of not cool, you know? So, yeah, that's, uh, I mean, they're basically making us look at the events of the world through beer goggles, you know? Mm. Like, wondering, like, why, why that, that girl at the end of the bar who was cute at the beginning of the night doesn't look so good the next morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know if you know the concept of beer goggles, but no, never. it's basically you get drunk and girls who don't look very good yeah, suddenly yeah, okay. start looking yeah, a little bit I better. Figured, yeah. yeah, so beer goggles. Yeah, I mean that's that's how we we look at history is through beer goggles. Yeah. Like, oh shit, this, this this looks pretty fucking good, huh? Yeah. And you wake up the next day, you know, and you're like, oh that that was not a good decision. <laughs> that was not very. That was not. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, um, everything else? Propaganda. Can, you can continue on that. I mean, I think you pretty much touched on it. There's nothing else, really. Propaganda is obviously important because you need it to get your people on board. Yeah. Um, it's almost an excuse to engage in imperialism. Um, if you don't have this sort of propaganda at home, how else are you going to get your people to... Uh, support you when you go and invade countries or when you go and engage in war uh propaganda is almost required uh so i would argue that it's important to uh for us to combat uh propaganda with our own propaganda uh anti-imperialist propaganda and I think that's what we did in the 60s. And I, it worked just uh, really well, actually. You had a whole anti-war movement. You had protests, you know, very often. Uh, just a revolutionary environment. The revolutionary spirit was spread all over um, to white people as well. Um, so, yeah, that's what I would put emphasis on is you know the importance of you know the idea that propaganda is not inherently bad uh but it's important that you know we we know how to use it to combat uh right-wing fascist uh imperialist propaganda Uh, i would like to say um because you said it's not inherently bad. I think that as long as you are transparent about your biases and remain factual without misrepresenting data, you know, as long as, I guess, you're, uh, you, you do it in good faith, you know, like, then it's okay. Because I, I try to have it apply to you know, kind of across the board. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to see, like, what rules I would put in place, but I, th- I think that that's what it would be, is it would have to be an accurate representation. I mean, if it's painted one way or another, I mean, that's obviously going to change from person to person based on their own biases, and I'm okay with that. But as long as it, like I said, they're transparent about their biases, you know, it's one thing if you're try- if you're presenting yourself as being unbiased and then you start spreading propaganda... I think that's wrong. No matter what side you're on, you can't do that. That's fucked up, you know. But if you're presenting yourself saying, you know, like, oh, I'm a, I'm a leftist, you know, like I'm a, I'm a communist, so you know, I'm, I'm gonna give you information through a communist lens. I think that's perfectly all right. I mean, you're not as long as, like I said, you're not skewing data, you know, you're not misrepresenting certain data points or cherry picking or, you know, do, doing all of that, the, the little like, bad faith bullshit that that ends up resulting in like a wildly different picture than what is reality mm. you know i think that's where the i mean if drawn to me. if if i were to make a w- movie right now about u.s imperialism in the middle east mm. uh i would just make a movie you know depicting that you know that pers- shit that happens. You know, based on yeah. I mean, I don't think you would need much propaganda in that. <laughs> like, right? It's it's so fucked that like, right. you could be as neutral as you want, and it would still look really right. fucking. Bad. You could be even considerate to U.S. imperialism, and it'd still look bad. 
But like I wouldn't have to say by the way, I'm a communist, I'm an anti imperialist, you know, I well, would just show No, it. you wouldn't see and that that's what I mean. Like I I'm not saying you have to start the film by saying, Hi, I'm Sean. Right. <laughs> no, know? no, like, I get that. I'm a communist and this film is gonna be through a communist lens. But I just mean that like not to present yourself or the film as if it's going to be neutral if you have no intention of it being neutral. Yeah, but that what does that have to do with propaganda? Everything, because propaganda is about bias, political bias specifically. So if you're presenting no, yourself, no, it's as not. Kind of, it's not inherently about bias. Yes, it is. No, I just read the definition. It's about bias. It specifically said that it's information that's being spread with a political bias. Yeah, but it's not inherently about biases. What what is it about then? If it's not about biases, no, it's just holding a per, uh, a particular. Uh, you're pushing information uh, that can be biased, but it's not. Okay, and if it's not biased, is it still propaganda? Yeah, because if you're a, if you're a country that you know, that for example, um, let's say uh, let's say like Native Americans, mm. uh, you know, and they're they're pushing, you know, they're educating their, they have schools and they're educating their students. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're saying, you know, this is what the United States did. This is genocide. This is genocide, you know. Mm -hmm. um, there's no bias there. It's not like, oh, well, it's genocide because, you know, we're natives and, you know, so this is our side, right? It's just, it's just information. But at the same time, it can be considered if somebody wants to call, go out, go ahead and call it propaganda because they're instilling it into the minds of these young native children. Um, you know, w would you call that propaganda? Where these little kids, these little na native kids are sitting in classrooms being taught by a native teacher um, all of these things about evil things the U.S. has done. You're just... just Shit that a kid shouldn't be really hearing, right, at such a young age, you know, talking about how the U.S. erased, killed, slaughtered, the way they killed them. They show them movies, they give them books. It's all very heavily focused on the genocide of Native Americans. Yeah, but even if they didn't do that, the fact that they're teaching about it and focusing on certain elements, it, it's still propaganda. It's being done with yeah. a political bias. Yeah, but it's not a bias. It is a bias. They're no. Native Americans talking about the genocide of Native Americans. How can you say that that's not a bias? That's, it, because it's not. That, that's a bias. It's just not negative. It's not. I, that's why I'm saying like it's it's not a negative thing, but it is definitely a bias. I mean, that that's like if you you did you created a movie, yeah, you know about the genocide in Kosovo, and that yeah. was propaganda, and that was bias. It yeah. was factual. It was a hundred percent true, but you did it with your political bias you you did it with a very specific intention yeah, in mind, i'm not saying that aside i mean that's 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 a bias yeah but i'm not i'm saying that propaganda itself is not inherently biased propaganda is just an information okay you know it's just it can be biased if you if you hold a particular belief and you're talking about a certain subject for example if i'm a, uh, if i'm like a communist and I'm going to make a short video on what communism is, mm. that would be biased, right? And I understand that bias is not negative or positive, but, uh, you know, somebody uh, who happens to be whatever, whatever, talking about a certain subject, whatever, whatever, that doesn't mean that it's, that propaganda is, is synonymous with a political bias, that's in the definition. That's why I'm saying look it up. No, we can look it up. I, I read it. We can look it up. But it, it, again. But I mean, now, now you're not just challenging me. You're going to sit there and challenge. Like, look. Read it. This information, especially of a bias or misleading nature, used to promote or publicize a particular political cause or point of view. Yeah. Especially of a bias nature, but it's not inherently. Mm. So there, there are forms of propaganda. But again bias is just because of how the world is the way dynamics are the way power is today mm -hmm. it's it's that's what it comes out to how can I'm, you spread propaganda without it being biased because look the anti-war movement the anti-war movement how can that be considered propaganda how 
Oh, I'm, I'm anti-war. Well, no, 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 it's saying that it would... No, no, no. Think about anti-Vietnam. You have protesters yeah. protesting against Vietnam. Yeah, but I'm saying that that would be propaganda. But what it's saying there is that... How? But they're not Vietnamese. They're just Americans who... Right, they're but, not biased. They're not like... Yeah, but it, it's biased based on their, their political affiliations and beliefs. No, it's just it's just something that is... It's information. Yeah. Right? And it's... Again... Well, no, no, no. Propaganda... They're, they're spreading the concept of no war in Vietnam. That would be propaganda. I mean, like, look, look, look. So, information... Oh, you son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to hide it from me. Information, especially of a bias or misleading nature, used to promote or publicize a particular political cause. Yeah. The political cause being no war in Vietnam. Yeah. You know, but saying... That's not biased, though, because they have absolute... They're, they have no reason to be biased. As an Albanian making a film about the Albanian genocide, mm. that's bias. But what do an Amer- what does an American guy But that's making anti-war a- propaganda. I mean that you even said it yourself that you need to combat imperialism with anti-imperialist propaganda. Yes. But this is about Vietnamese. I'm talking about Vietnam. Right. So a Vietnamese person But I mean that that's film- still imperialism and what yeah. they were doing was anti-imperialist propaganda. Yes. Yes. Okay, cool. What Vietnamese were doing. No. What I'm talking about is, is America. Over in America, them spreading around the concept of no war in Vietnam would be propaganda. I yeah, will, no, I I'm, will not say saying, that. I'm not saying that it's not propaganda. Okay. It is. It's just not biased. Okay. And that's what I'm saying. It would be biased for the Vietnamese to do it because they're okay. Vietnamese. Americans making anti-war propaganda, it is propaganda Okay. because they're spreading information. Right. Of a particular view. Okay. But they have no bias. What bias do they have? Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you're right when you say, and when the definition says, especially biased. Mm. But it's not inherently biased. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I can't no, think that, of... That, that what's example? another example? For example, I, I don't know, because the Native American one was bad. But... For me, for, me, for example, making a, a film about Puerto Rico. Yeah. How how is it biased for me to make a film about fucking Puerto Rico? Yeah, because you have no interest or. Well, like, or well, I'm not Puerto Rican. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But I know what's going on I'm in Puerto Rico. Raising Kissimmee, dog. I mean, okay, maybe even Puerto Rico is a bad example because no, 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 all no. my <laughs> friends are Puerto Rican. You feel me? But but you know what I'm saying. It's like it's biased mainly, but it's not inherently biased, and that's okay. important. No, 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 I, I think I think saying uh, I, I think uh, I think you're right on that one. Um, I was I was wrong on that, but. Okay, so propaganda doesn't need to be biased. Right. Which is why it's but okay. If it is biased, it is po- propaganda? No, it's still propaganda. Propaganda is propaganda. No, 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 I'm saying, like, if you are spreading biased information, that would be propaganda. Yeah. But, but spreading also- propaganda does not mean that it's specifically biased exactly. information. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, so going back a little, so. Sorry, I'm trying to rewind in my head. So we were talking about. Um, fuck! How far back do I? Co- anti-colonial, f- yeah, no, fight back. combating propaganda with our own propaganda, or yeah. are you trying to go further? No, I th- I think that was it. What the hell? God dang it! <laughs> I don't even... Combating. Right, pause it. Rewind. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't I don't remember anymore. We're we're gonna go back and be like, oh fuck, that's what it was. Um, you yeah, know, it... son of a bitch hate this because i feel like like i'm being rushed since like we're we're recording so i, I don't want to sit here and harp on it but anyway um well what what, what no what do you think about that idea then since we're on it i mean the idea of spreading anti oh oh that's why okay because we're uh, i had mentioned that uh, that you should be upfront and forthcoming about your intentions right. Right. um okay so if you are going to create propaganda i believe that it would be uh, important to be upfront and uh, uh, about your biases if you have any. Yeah, okay. I, I think that that would be fairly important. And like I said, it doesn't mean you need to put a disclaimer at the beginning of your film saying, "Hey, I am biased." But I mean, like, if you were to be interviewed, if you were to be asked, not to shy away from it, not to try to hide, and not try to try to, pro- uh, I guess, um, promote yourself or the film as supposed as being supposedly unbiased. Okay. You know. Um, like, uh, like, like I said, with your documentary, you know, would you ever say that you were unbiased in that? No, but 
I, I get what you're saying, and I agree right. partially. There's mm. one part, though, like, um, there's a difference between saying, um, okay, uh, you're being interviewed, and, mm. you know, you're trying to say, like, oh, no, I'm, I'm totally neutral. Like, mm. if you're being interviewed, if I'm being interviewed about my film, for example, and mm. somebody says, like, so are you coming from a neutral perspective? And if I said, yeah, then, right, that would be unfair. Yes. But I don't think that it is necessary me necessary for me to come out. And I'm not saying in the beginning of the video, but anywhere in the video at all, mm-hmm. I don't think it's necessary for me to, to, to um, express my biases. In the actual video, in, in the in the in the propaganda itself, if somebody were to okay, ask yeah, me, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, like yeah, you, yeah, that's that's fair. Like if it was, if it's in like the the description of the fi- something outside of the film itself, then I, I would say it's required within the film itself. I don't think that it's necessarily required because I mean it, it's it's propaganda. It should be pretty mm-hmm. pretty apparent, I guess. I, I, you know. Um, like, yeah. imagine a protester at a sign, holding mm. a sign that says, uh, the United States just blew up a, a school bus in, in Yemen, which mm. is what really fucking happened a couple yeah. years back. Uh, I mean, you could even use the most recent example where we air stri- we sent uh, an airstrike yeah. uh, in Syria to destroy an arms depot yeah. that apparently held some uh, some... Oh my god, what the fuck was it? It was something complicated where there were there were like anti-American soldiers in Syria who had attacked an American outpost in Iraq. Yeah. And then we use that as an excuse to bomb an arms depot of theirs right. and killed like 17 of their people, right. but apparently they were all combatants, but huh. regardless. Right. It, anyway, anyway, sorry. So in a protest, you see somebody yes. holding a sign that says, the United States kills innocent children. Yeah. And that person is a f- super far-left communist, you know, mm-hmm. super anti-American, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a form of propaganda, mm-hmm. you know. And let's say that picture gets, somebody takes a picture of the sign, yeah. posts it on social media, spreads like wildfire. Yeah. Right? That's a form of propaganda. Okay. Now, when you talk about, like, the importance of revealing the biased nature, mm-hmm. right? Even though that person may or may not be biased, depending on whether that person maybe not by nationality, but maybe by ideology, because communism is is inherently like anti imperialist. So I guess in that sense, but I don't think there's any communist alive, at least not a true communist, who, if interviewed after that picture was leaked, would be like. Oh no no no! Not me. I'm, right, right. I'm just a local Republican. You know, right, like right. I, I think they would all stick to their fucking guns and be like, "Yeah, fuck yeah. this warmongering hate machine." One hundred percent. Yeah. But but what responsibility does the person promoting and spreading the propaganda, which is one, the person holding the sign, mm-hmm. and two, the person who spreads it on? on social media yeah whatever. i suppose neither because they're they're inherently separate people okay. i mean like the person holding the sign did was not intending to have pictures taken of them right i mean whether they are or aren't even if they're on camera like that's not the point the point is just to get people to see it right um and possibly to spark conversation and in that conversation it would probably come up um at least you know some aspects of their ideology uh, right. the photographer themselves might have their own biases but even in spreading that picture it's more of them just reporting on the event itself mm-hmm. so I, I find a lot less responsibility to be put on to them as individuals mm-hmm. than i would on you as a filmmaker um because everything within your film that you're putting together is intentional mm-hmm. you know specifically and you know you're also controlling how it's being advertised how mm-hmm. it's being spread around um you know ultimately kind of who sees it uh and what they're seeing so i I think that that's why it would be a bigger responsibility on you right but my argument is just uh to your whole point about uh revealing your biases Mm -hmm. um i'm not so uh i don't think that's very as necessary as you think it is Mm mm-hmm um, I agree with you that you shouldn't lie about your biases when asked. Mm-hmm. Um, but 
coming up front and saying, yes, okay, I am Puerto Rican, so this is why I created this mm. uh, painting of the United States choking Puerto Rico or some mm. shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't think it's... Uh, it's like they're <laughs> hitting it right on the fucking head, you know? Like, no symbolism. <laughs> just Like, to what extent do I think it's necessary for the artist to make it clear to the to the public who is looking at this piece of art in let's say a gallery or some shit mm. that guys mm. i just want to be clear this is propaganda mm. you know what i'm saying it's not i i, I don't I think don't, you're I saying don't... that necessarily no, that, that's that's kind of weird but uh, but but i think what you place emphasis on is uh revealing the the bias the biases the inner biases it's yeah, like, i feel like it, it would kind of add more more power to that painting if you're like listen I, you know as a puerto rican you know i just uh i'm doing this to stand by puerto rico and stand against the u.s mm-hmm. and their uh, imperialist nature i think that since if you're if your intention is to make propaganda you're gonna want to try to do something with that propaganda you know that's why i'm saying i don't know why someone would make that painting and then shy away from it be like right. oh i mean i i just made this to make this i don't it doesn't really mean anything right. You know, you would want to tell a story, and you're doing that to get attention so you can tell a story. I mean, yeah. no, that's so, fair, and I agree. I agree with that one hundred percent. Yeah, I, I would say basically because it, it seems like you think that I mean something a lot more like explicit. I'm um, talking large scale. I'm talking like Soviet Union propaganda. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I'm talking state sponsored or organizational sponsored. You know, propaganda. Imagine we opened up a. a so we say like go army. Something like Go Army, but I'm talking about our own. Something to combat anti-imperialism. Okay, you know, if okay. Me so, and you so started it, something. Right, right. So, so using Go Army as an example, because I see their ad everywhere. You know, it's always like, oh yeah, real men join the army. Shit. Right. You know, like uh, if so, if we were to put out anti-military propaganda saying, hey, don't join the military because right. of whatever reasons. You know, oh hey. You might die, you might get brainwashed, you might get PTSD, uh-huh. uh, you really just don't know, you're just kind of rolling the dice, and you're, you're kind of young, you should wait a few years, whatever the case may be. Right. So if we were to, to do that, then what's uh, what, what's the point that you want to make? Uh, about revealing biases. Mm-hmm. You know, um, that's again, that's a bit more uh, complex, because that's propaganda without bias. I mean, we might have if you if you want to say my port my people in Puerto Rico mm-hmm. are suffering from this, or my people in my fellow Muslims in uh you know in the Middle East are suffering from this go army. Mm-hmm. You know, in that sense, it is uh, biased. Right, even ideologically, like you right. said. I mean, both of us are pretty like anti-military. So. Right. Uh, but. Uh, if it's not something, if we're just two white dudes who have no connect, connection with anything, mm-hmm. we just don't like the U.S. military because, like, what they do. Mm. They they commit crimes against innocent people. Right. Uh, I well, mean, if there's no bias to, to admit to, then there's no bias to admit right. to. That's fine. But I still stand by my other point where you still should act in good faith and uh, accurately represent the data. You know, right. No, of course. No, no mis, no misinformation by saying right. like you know, seventy two percent of men who go into the military die. Right. Forty seven percent of women who go into the military, uh, you know, get get seriously injured or some okay. crazy shit. Yeah, you yeah. know, like you can't just make stuff up. Right. You know, no. that's fucked up. Of course. Um. Same with like cherry picking. That's why I I put more emphasis on like the good faith aspect where it's like just just kind of don't be a dickhead about it. You know, right. just okay. Do no, it with that's... the best intentions. That's 100% understandable. You don't mm-hmm. want to spread misinformation. That's exactly what, you know, right. the other side is doing. Exactly. And that's one of the reasons why I think it's so important to be as transparent as possible is because if you really want to combat the other side, it's not that you have to combat what they're saying or what their points are. You just have to com- combat ignorance, right. really, which is a very difficult thing to do in and of itself. But right. that's what's going to be necessary is getting people to be able to think for themselves. And you can only do that if you give them stuff that they can actually trust. What you know, percent Regardless of whether it turns them against you or with you, you need people to be able to start trusting information. You know, because we're at a point right now where people are so distrustful not just of the government anymore unfortunately it's fucking spread and anti-intellectualism has become a thing 
people don't even trust science anymore. Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? It's science. Science has literally got us to the point that we're at. Yeah. That is wild. That is a wild concept to stop trusting in science. And it's why because you don't trust the government and it's like you said it's it's the whole oh america said it so it must be a lie well no i mean that's like saying everything america has ever done has just been bad it's like well, no so some good shit has come out of this i mean look at the point in in like evolution uh, or in technological development that we're at now mm-hmm. you know yeah it's been done on the backs of many and it's it's been horrible but to say right. that nothing good has come out of anything is just dumb and ahistorical. Right. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. So, yeah, imperialism. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was well said. That was well said. Yeah. yeah. So, for the record, I won. <laughs> yeah. All right. No, um, I think, I think that's, that's got to wrap it up, man. Okay. I got a pee. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm gonna go first because I just go use your parents' path. Okay, yeah, that's right. The fuck you doing? Okay. <laughs> pee in your sink. All right. So uh, see you next time <laughs> on uh, All Radical me. Rascals. Thanks for listening. And I guess as a as a final note, um, look into imperialism and colonialism. They're complicated concepts. I think we did pretty well at breaking them down but it never hurts to just look into these things on your own we are not experts we are doing this only to like talk and to like i guess uh use these as benchmarks uh, of of our own political and intellectual growth uh so just look into them and uh yeah i guess that's that's pretty much all i really have to say this time around bye no, I don't think you actually stopped it. Oh. <laughs> you lean back and everything. Oh. All right, let's try this again. All right, bye. <laughs>